Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be looking at pure blue crocodile control. For those of you who haven't read the croc leader, its ability is to return 4 dawn to bounce a unit on your opponent's board. I feel like this leader's ability is very underrated as it is very dangerous late game. It combos really well with Mihawk to return 2 units, one to the bottom of your deck and one to your opponent's hand. Or you can even play Jinbei, bounce it back and play Jinbei again. This deck has interesting combos and is difficult to deal with because blockers simply do not stick against this deck and you can also bounce multiple high cost units at once. We're going to go ahead and get into the deck list, please enjoy. Alright, so first off here we have Missile Sunday. Um, Missile Sunday is simply like the best blue blocker. Uh, if your leader's Baroque works, which Crocodile is, you get to add one event from your chest to your hand. So this is going to be really good for recurring cards like uh, Overheat, recurring like Crescent Cutlass, or even uh, recurring Sables. Next up we have Lost, just a one cost blocker. Um, personally, I think this is better than Crocodile. Crocodile is like pretty good, but the problem is Crocodile is five cost, and we use up a lot of down per turn, so Crocodile just isn't as efficient as a one cost blocker. We have Jinbei. I think this Jinbei is extremely underrated. I see a lot of lists running like for Mr. 3. Uh, if you don't know what Mr. 3 is, this is Mr. 3 right here. I see a lot of lists running for Mr. 3 and no Jinbei. This card's really good. Being able to permanently send a cost through lower back to the uh, bottom of the owner's deck is way better than just stunning it for a turn. The way I feel is uh, I believe that Jinbei is good early game. Uh, whereas like Mr. 3 is pretty good late game against decks like maybe like Zoro or against um, or against like uh, Luffy, red green Luffy, just stuff like that. So I think Jinbei is really solid and is a must have. Here we have Alvita. So the only reason I really have Alvita to be honest is because I did want to run 12 2Ks. I used to run um, Moria, but I found that a lot of the time I would want to guard with Moria from my hand. So I was like, you know, fuck it, we'll just go on 12 2Ks. And it's been working pretty well so far. Um, this card's effect also happens to be pretty good against Zoro. If this sticks against Zoro, Zoro will play a unit and you just bounce it back for free. Or, well, not for free, you have to discard a card. But it's still uh, pretty efficient because we do have a lot of draw on this deck thanks to cards like uh, Boa Hancock. Next up, we have Mr. 3. So, as I said while talking about Jinbei, I think Mr. 3 is really good late game because your opponent can call something, you just stun it. It's really good against the red green Luffy, and you can even bounce this unit back to your hand with Crocodile in order to use it twice. Mr. 3 also combos really well with Overheat. Um, sometimes there's situations where you don't want to bounce your opponent's Overheat, like if they have an Otama on board or something like that. Not, <laughs> you don't, I mean, you don't want to use Overheat's effect to bounce if they have like an Otama or something. So you would rather bounce your own Mr. 3 you have on your board. We have Mr. 2, Bon Clay. Um, we don't have too many uh, Baroque work events in this deck. I think that the only one we have is, um, is Sables. Cutlass might, I think Cutlass is one too. Yeah, Sables and Cutlass. Um, but it's just another 2k counter, and if you do need to use it as a, an attacker early game, um, it's good. Sentomaru. I think that this card is one of the MVPs of the deck. I went back and forth between this card. I originally took it out, and then I decided that 7 cost croc isn't good in this deck for reasons I'll talk about, um, later. But I think that Sentomaru is really solid. Being able to fill up your board with uh, 6Ks is extremely solid, especially because of how good this deck's defense is. Um, your opponent really struggles to do with your board. If you've ever played against like Doflamingo, it's kind of like, it kind of gives that Doflamingo effect where your opponent keeps trying to do, if your opponent keeps trying to do with your board, they will simply just lose the game because they're, they're not really able to deal with it. So since tomorrow is really good. We have Boa Hancock. Boa Hancock's really good. This is, will be our, uh, 12 uh 12 blockers essentially this will be like our tw uh third blocker and it's also a really good attacker as well you don't even have to block with it um just being able to uh draw a card when you attack or block with it is it's just really good it's just really solid we have mihawk mihawk is really good as well it's a 2k counter and it's when attacking effect is really good for filtering out your hand if you're against a matchup where you don't need jinbei you can discard jinbei if you're against a matchup where you don't need mihawk you can discard mihawk it's just a really good card overall um, Pacifista just goes well with Sentomaru, and it is a 6k, which is a really nice stat to have in this deck. Um, before we get into Mihawk, I want to talk about Crocodile. So you will notice that I don't have Crocodile in this deck. Um, the reason for that is Crocodile just simply isn't efficient, and I'm not running that many events. Like, I'm running 8 two-cost events, and I don't think that's enough to utilize Crocodile. And then the problem with Crocodile itself is that it's 7 cost, so once you play it um, to the field, you lose a lot of tempo. Unless you're at 10 memory, and even then you're still kind of losing tempo because 
this deck doesn't have events to like consistently use i don't think eight is enough i think you want like 10 to 12 to uh consistently get instant value out of croc so that's the reason we don't run croc next up we have mihawk i'm of the opinion that mihawk is good in like any blue deck i know mihawk costs nine but i think it goes really well with crocodile because you can play mihawk then you can activate crocodile skill to return a cost power lower to its owner hand and the other thing is that it's it's a nine cost 9k like once mihawk hits hits the board the majority of decks just can't deal with it like the only deck that can really deal with it is probably like kaido because they do have a the 10 cost kaido that nukes everything but then they've just nuked everything like mihawk is just really good uh it's a 9k it really helps when you're going against um kid because kid is really difficult for blue to deal with so having like a permanent 9k that six on the board is really good for that aside from the monsters here we have our events we have overheat i just have it at two right now um i only have it at two just because you do have to if there's a cost three or less on your opponent's field you have to bounce it and there's some cards you just don't want to bounce but i think overall it's pretty solid it also combos well with mr three so i would consider running more mr three and more overheat possibly crescent cut last i was kind of mad on this card but the reason i run it is because i think it's really good against uh yamato when your opponent thinks they can just stack a bunch of stuff on yamato and swing with it and i think it's really good against blocker luffy because this deck does kind of struggle a bit against blocker luffy so being able to bounce that late game when you're at uh one life or zero life is really good two sables this card could potentially go to three but i just don't find myself using it very often um i normally use this card late game and late game i would rather use mihawk so it's just a two of right now you can also recur it with missile sunday if necessary or you can grab it with bon Clay. and then for the last card here we have four love love beam this is simply like the best um or i guess one of the best because there's a lot of good blue events but it's one of the best um blue events um, it gives that blue croc effect of being able to draw a card while you're low on hand, which is really good. And it just it just really helps with the longevity of this deck. Late game, Love Love Beam is a ridiculous card because you're basically blocking an attack for free while plusing one. So Love Love Beam is really solid. That's it for this crocodile deck list. Um, I know running no seven croc probably sounds weird, but trust me, like it's definitely worth. I've been testing a, uh, a lot against law and stuff like that. And being able to have Sento Maru fill up the board is just so, so good. And Crocodile is just a huge tempo loss, so I'm not really rocking with it. But that's it for this deck list. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. Leave a like if you like the deck list. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.